Isaac Newton realized that the force that keeps the moon in its orbit is the same force that pulls an apple towards the earth, near the surface of the earth. And so he also realized that this was problematic for the law of gravitation because the law of gravitation says that the force on the apple is equal to the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times the total mass of the earth, 5.98 times 10 to the 24 kilograms, times the mass of the apple divided by the distance from the apple to the center of the earth squared. Okay, and he realized that this was problematic for the gravitation law because as the apple is here, it sees a bunch of stuff out on the horizon laterally in every direction, right? Okay, so who's to say that the sum of all those forces from all those different protons and neutrons and electrons all, you know, gravitationally pulling the electron in all these different directions all around you, right, all around it, who's to say that all of those forces will add up in such a way that all of the mass of the Earth is concentrated at its center. And so he realized this problem, and so he set out to derive a shell theorem, which we'll present now and derive later. Here it is. So this is what the shell theorem says. It says that if you have a, a mass out here, a particle out here with mass lowercase m, and you have a shell of mass like so, right? And the Earth and any, you know, of the planets can be thought of as a bunch of nested shells, one on top of the other, okay? So then the force between this mass and the shell of mass will be equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of the shell, capital M, the mass of this guy, times the lowercase m, divided by the distance from the, the, the particle to the center of the shell squared, okay? So this is Newton's shell theorem for a mass outside of the shell. Next, we'll consider what happens when a mass goes inside the shell, and then we'll derive it. See you next time.